Aloha fun. You hope you're having a great day. Here's a little mini tutorial. We can also hop on FaceTime and chat about it. I'm here in the little cabin and Elsie is up in the loft um, reading or maybe she's playing on her iPad. I don't know if you'll be able to hear her, but she's here too. Elsie, do you want to say hi? <laughs> okay, first step, I tap the I key, sample your little color chip there, your Pantone thing. Then if you go to the adjustment layer icon down here in the bottom uh, area, sorry, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit on that, um, the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color, it will then create a solid color layer with that color that you just sampled as your background. So there is that exact color, we click OK. So now we have that color, which we can come back to later. Um, might as well just drop it underneath the background layer because we're going to select our, our object here. There's tons of ways to make selections now, and they're crazy and really good. Um, one easy one, it, I mean, if you go to any of these selection tools, you can just choose one of those and you'll see select subject shows up now in the top options bar right there. So you can try that or you can also choose like an object selection because it's an object. Photoshop's going to be really good and you just drag around it and it creates a selection of it. Then what you want to do is go to select and mask and that's up top in the options bar again. Click on that. It'll enter into a new workspace and from there you can choose an option like how do you want to see your selection? So in this case, everything not selected is red. Or um, let's see, I could go on layers. Now everything I'm seeing is that color that we have in the background. So it's already showing me how this is going to look. And the reason why you want to come here, sometimes you may need to work on your edges. So smoothing it out will take edges that are maybe chunky and, and, and smooth them out. Feathering, I'm going to do this in a bad way. It makes the edges way too soft. I went too high, but you can see they're kind of glowing edges. Contrast brings back definition to the edge. So sometimes it is nice to add a little feather, maybe a little contrast, maybe a little smoothing, depending on the light, how it was shot, and all that kind of stuff. Shifting edge, you can kind of trim it in, or you can extend your edges out. Um, in this case, I don't really think I need to do anything here, but I just wanted to show you those controls in case, I don't know, you need to use them. Then for your output settings, um, we're just going to output this to selection, not a new layer, not a new document. All we're doing here is just making the selection better. And again, you can view this in these different ways, um, which sometimes help you see some issues. Like the only issue I'm seeing is down here is this little area where the shadow, let me zoom in, you know, it kind of didn't know if this was shadow or if this was bottle. So we may need to fix that up. And then down here, you can kind of see a little bit of the background, but that's not worrying me too much. But we could try to smooth that out. Yeah, that actually looks a little better. Um, you probably can't see that, but to my eye, that looks better. So again, all we're doing there is just making a better selection. So step one, use one of the techniques to make a selection. I used, I chose object selection. You can also do quick select, or you could do select subject up here or you could use quick mask, but then you go to select and mask and sweeten it up, fix it up. Next step, click on your mask icon. And sometimes it's helpful to have something crazy in the background. So I'll just go to solid color and maybe like blue or something, bright blue. And the reason why is that can really help you see um, what the edges are looking like, like back to that issue I was pointing out earlier is this little thing down here. Again, I have no idea if this is a problem or not, but if it is, um, we could grab our brush, tap the B key. Um, I'll, I'll paint with black there and just kind of, um, I'm doing sort of a bad job on this, um, but try to make this little edge a little bit nicer. And I'm just tapping the X key to go back and forth between black and white so I can kind of fix it from both sides. And I think that's fine. I mean, no one's going to really even see that. We're zoomed into gazillion percent. But again, if you need to do that, you can do that. All right. Um, obviously, I don't have the shadow. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second and why um, uh, I don't have that. But so far, we can see, okay, now we have it on the good on-brand background, and that looks awesome. What I would do for the shadow is make a selection of that. And let's just use a quick select tool and just drag our paint over it. And it's going to make sort of a rough selection of this shadow. And 
I mean, if we wanted to, let me just copy this layer so that the background layer is intact. But if we wanted to, we could just click add layer mask. And then now I'm going to set this on the top of the stack. I'll call this one shadow. Again, you don't need to do all this naming um, every time, but just so when I send you the file, you can, it makes sense. So here we have kind of our bottle and there we have our shadow. Our shadow obviously needs to be fixed up, which is fine, no biggie. Um, and it needs to be fixed up in the, the same way as before. So grab the brush tool and I'm going to paint it all the way over here to connect to the bottle because I want to make sure it's connected there. Make a little teeny small brush and get it in there. Okay, there's my nice little shadow. Um, and that's just naturally how it is. Darker as the closer it gets and then make sure this is actually all the way there. Okay, good. Now, what do we do about all the chunkiness of the shadow? There's a lot, a lot of options we could do here. One option would be to, if you double click the mask icon, it opens up the properties panel for masking. You can also go to window and properties, same thing. We could go to select and mask here and same kind of things we've seen before. We could sort of feather this out. We could sort of smooth this out. So if I smooth this out, now it's gonna have much kind of smoother edges, maybe contrast. I could also view this on layers. So now I'm kind of seeing it in real time, how that looks. So that's definitely one option. Um, so I'll just click okay there. Like that's one way to sort of smooth it. Another way is to go into the mask panel and just add some feathering and that could kind of soften it out depending on how, we, how you want that to look. Um, and then another way, which is what I think I would do if I were like professionally hired to do this. So create a, uh, a group, put this inside of the group, click on the group and add a mask. So essentially I'm gonna mask away what's inside of this. And maybe just to make this really simple, what uh, we can do here is if we have our brush and if we paint with black, and we're gonna paint without any hardness, nice brush size. And obviously you can slow this video down and repeat it, I know I'm going fast. But what we can do is I could sort of click and then hold on the shift key and click and create, that one didn't look very good, it's a little too dissolved, but click and shift click, create kind of a straighter line there for it, um, for the shadow, click and shift click. So it kind of removes some of the, the wonkiness of it, click and shift click. When you click and shift click, you're just creating a, a straight line um, and what that's doing if I click on this you can kind of see the before and after let's let me show you that kind of in in real time with this so you can kind of see how what went from kind of this awkward shape is just this nice smooth little shadow there it's the wrong color but but it's nice and smooth so I I think that shadow should just be smooth and then you could you can play with that too um, even I'm gonna make my brush bigger and then I'm gonna go down, tap 10 or one on the keyboard to go to 10% opacity. And you could kind of fade this mask off if you wanted to, like often, you know, as it gets further away. So it kind of dissolves out, um, has a stronger, you know, you can kind of see it sort of transitions now. Again, I'm getting a little carried away. I don't even know exactly how you wanna do that, but just kind of highlighting that the advantage of this double masking technique that we did over here is you have one good mask on this layer and then another one, which is refining it. All right, so then that's cool. So now we need color, right? We need to get back to our color thing. So I go back to my little color chip, just make sure that's good. Eyedropper, sample that color. Just want that as our foreground color there. Um, and I didn't, I guess I could have sampled the background, but I was just trying to be precise. Once you have these backgrounds and the thing we'll do to the shadow, you only need to do it once and drag it into the other files. So this is a one, one and done kind of thing. All right, so then I'll click into this little layer group just to highlight, we have our little shadow there. We're in this little group. I'm gonna click on the icon again for solid color. It's gonna choose that color I already sampled, perfect. And then I'm going to do a layer clipping mask. If you hold down the option key, that now, that is covering up the shadow. It's gonna be exactly the same as the background, so that's not what we want. What we wanna do is change this to a blending mode of color. And now what you'll see is when that sits on top of the background here with our little bottle, that it's taking on the tint of that background, but it's darker. If that doesn't look good, for some reason, if you're like, ah, I wish the shadow was a little redder, I would just click 
to the bottle, maybe go to color balance or a little more yellow. Let me just kind of exaggerate here, see if we can get, um, actually, sorry, it has to be above here, um, not below that one, because that one was overpowering the uh, color. So now I'm above my little color here. And then if I want it more yellow or more red, again, I don't think you will, but sometimes with shadows, you kind of have to play, like maybe you want to, like that's kind of cool, you know, that's rather than, let me zoom in, around the shadow that was so black, you know, um, it has a little hint of color in it. So anyway, there you go, playfulness, fun. Okay, so we have all that stuff, which is really fun. Um, the nice thing about this is then you can get obviously incredibly creative with uh, using other backgrounds, other colors, and all those kind of things. So I'm going to call this one shadow. I'll send all these to you. And these guys, I'm just going to group together. I'm going to call those um, notes because those are the notes to me. And then let's just go back to the little background. So we have original. Above that, we have a color fill. Above that, we have our bottle and we have our shadow. So if for some reason, I don't know, someone you someone in your family wanted a different color you've already seen how we could use solid colored layers you, you can use really whatever you want um, we could go kind of to a blue background we could go to a white background um, we could go to a white background without the shadow um, and we just have the bottle by itself and so this gives us this real flexibility then the only other thing I want to highlight is let's say it's white and you want to stack up bottles I'll go ahead and drag this to the new layer icon or press command J and then move this over is when you're stacking bottles, you may notice something interesting about your edge that you hadn't before. So see how the edge got brighter because it was on a bright background right there. If that for some reason bothers you, or if you want to add more shadows, what I would do is double click the layer and start to play with inner shadow. And so with inner shadow, you see how I'm kind of darkening, um, darkening the edge from the edge in. So if because we don't have that same color there or something, maybe we want a little um, a little darkening around that. Or maybe in addition, we want a drop shadow. We want a little shadow behind it. And maybe let's see, um, doo -doo -doo, let me just do something so it's really obvious so we can see what it is. Um, and then I'll zoom out again. I'm not saying this is a great drop shadow, but you can see, okay, I have my little drop back there behind this guy. Um, then we can always, you know, turn these on and off as needed. Or if the inner shadow is too strong, just change your opacity level. If the drop shadow needs to be changed, just double click it and go in and um, modify kind of how that is. Or if you want a little bit of, I don't know, you want to have a little color in that shadow for some reason. Um, we could make it a little yellow, a little orange. That's more glowy than it is shadowy. And of course, there is outer glow too. So you could always do that too if you want um, to, to create that. Um, okay, that was a little just sort of extra. Um, let me just put that up top. Call this layer extra as far as website. If you get to the stacking, let's go back and just talk about the process one more time really quickly. So what I would do, eyedropper and sample your good color. So if you know you have a good color, which you do, um, sample that guy, boom. That sets it as your um, foreground color. Next step, um, create a new background layer with that. And that just gives us the ability to have that floating there in the background. I'll trash that because we already have one. Um, and then from there, we worked on the selection of the bottle However you select the bottle, like if we go just select, um, actually, let me go to a layer where it's there. If we go to select subject and then go to select and mask and see that it's made a mistake, like can you see right here it didn't select part of the bottle? Um, what we could do is we could try to fix that. Let's see, wait, sorry, let me use this tool, quick select tool. Let me add to it gonna fix that because it missed that part uh, missed a little part over there let me just see if anything else oh I could kind of fix this up a little bit I could kind of remove a touch of that or kind of add a bit of that um, and do, 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 do. I think that all looks good we could smooth our edges we could add contrast whatever um, the whole point with that is 
make a selection and then improve the selection and then add the layer mask. And so that's what we did with this, uh, this right here. Then after we did that, we went back and worked on our little shadow and the shadow was two couple steps. Um, one was just selecting the shadow. You could always add fake shadows too, but you have such a good shadow. I think just working with that um, and then adding some color into the shadow and exploring how to fine tune that color. Last but not least with the shadows, with the look, I always like to hold down the option key and click on the eye icon of the background layer, which shows the before and after. And I just want to see like, is there anything that I'm missing? Like, did I make any big, bold, blatant, horrible mistake? Um, Cause that just gives that ultimate kind of before and after. And I, and I don't think so. I think that looks nice, good, clean, and all, all of those kind of things. And this looks like amazing Noni. <laughs> I love the packaging. I love everything about it. Okay, last little, last little thing. I know this is a lot, but hopefully this is helpful. Is sometimes with fine-tuning color, like in this case, let's say the purple you wanted to fine-tune, there are a number of ways to do that. One way might be to go to, and you probably know all this stuff, but selective color. Um, you could go into one of the, the color options and you can see how I can kind of just swing, nudge this color one way or another. I know that you kind of want to be true to the color that it is, but maybe in the photograph it, it turned more purple and less pink and it should be more pink. Or maybe you just want to see what it would be like to have that pink in the packaging, you know, and you want to show someone in your family that option. So that's a nice way to fine tune the color. Another way, hue saturation, grab the eyedropper tool, sample that color, and then just swing it around. And if you notice that it didn't pick up a color over here, grab the eyedropper with the plus icon and just click through that. But you can see this one already is more involved and the results aren't as good and it's affected other areas. So it would require me to paint this into that area. So that, that technique I don't necessarily like, but that one works. Uh, another option is I'm just going to do a real drastic different color, go to the mask, choose color range, and sample the color. Um, and as you sample it, this is similar to what we saw before, you're building a mask here where it's primarily affecting that area, but then you're going to have to clean up that mask and blah, blah, blah. So all that being said, and there's tons of other ways to do color, the selective color was the one just contrasting it with those is like that's a really easy with your with your kind of packaging a bold way that you could experiment with that and you could do it with other ones as well just to to go there like we could say um uh clicked on the wrong thing go to selective color we could go into i don't know maybe the greens and just start to play with those and you can kind of see like oh what if they're more yellow green what if that's more of a green green what if we just tweak that more this way let me just see what kind of would be fun alternate packaging <laughs> idea but you can see like okay now this is really kind of a neon-y um, package but that might be cool packaging if it was something bright and poppy and wanted eye-catchy um, this i feel is a little more earthy and natural but all that being said options options i hope that is helpful there you have it reach out to me let me know we can always do this in real time